Now let us come to a good question. The question is, this is the reaction. And you are given 56 gram of iron. So, what you have to find is you have to find the weight of oxygen which would fully consume this 56 gram of iron. Now, you might think that just balance this equation, find the weight of oxygen and then carry on and then get the answer. But, if you would have remembered the balancing, this equation had more than one balancing. There was one 8 Fe plus 5O2 and there was also one 4 Fe plus 3O2 sort of balancing. And both were satisfying. So what actually happens, why isn't there one single balance, uh, one single correct balancing is because in this reaction, there are two reactions taking place. These are the two reactions taking place. Now, you may say that we can just balance these two reactions and add them to get this resultant reaction. But, what happens is that sometimes I mean, in the extreme case, this product is not formed at all. So, this reaction is not taking place at all. And in the other extreme case, this product is not formed at all. So, this reaction is not taking place at all. So, it's not, it's not really, you can't say how much of FeO would be formed, how much of Fe2O3 would be formed. That is why you cannot balance this reaction. So, if you want the answer, you will not get one single answer because this reaction may be taking place, this reaction, the other reaction may be taking place and it could be a mixture of both the reactions. I mean, so, that means some FeO is formed, some Fe2O3 is formed. So, what to do? The thing is, you will not get a single answer, but you will get a range of answers. Like from this reaction, you will get one weight of oxygen. And from this reaction, you will get another weight of oxygen. And the weight of oxygen must be lying between these two weights because this is one extreme case and this is the other extreme case. So, it has to be intermediate between the two extremes. So, first let us proceed with this reaction. First balance this reaction, it would be 2 Fe plus O2 gives 2 Fe. So, here in this reaction, two moles of Fe react with one mole of oxygen. So, 2 into 56 gram of Fe react with 32 grams of oxygen. So, 56 gram of Fe would react with 32 by 2 which is 16 grams of oxygen. So, we got one answer and in this reaction, the balancing would be um, 4 Fe plus 3O2 gives 2 Fe2O3. This is the. So, here 4 into 56, I hope you know that iron's uh, atomic weight is 56. I mean, you need to know these common atomic weights because uh, they, I mean, you, they don't really give you the atomic weights as such. Or only if the, only if it is a very, 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 um, Odd, com odd element, they will give you the atomic weight. Otherwise, even for iron, even an iron, oxygen, sodium, these, these things, they don't really give the atomic weights. And if you don't know the atomic weights, then 
you cannot calculate the molecular weight and then you cannot proceed with the question so basically you will be at c so that is why you need to know the atomic weights of these common elements so here 4 into 56 grams of iron react with 3 into 32 grams of oxygen so 56 grams of iron would react with 3 by 4 into 32 grams of oxygen which would be 24 grams of oxygen so we got another answer over here so the correct answer would be the required weight of oxygen is 16 to 24 gram so here in this you will not get one answer but you will get a range of answers okay this was a special kind of reaction Okay, so moving on from this limiting reagent concept actually sometimes what happens is that you get a reaction which is difficult to balance by hit and trial and too lengthy to balance by POAC and if you want to do the question fast then both the methods will take a lot of time and so you will lose time in uh, balancing the reaction so there is a method of actually finding the weight or the number of moles of the product or the reactant without actually balancing the reaction like in this in limiting reagent uh, case we had to balance the reaction that was a necessity but in this case we don't really have to balance the equation so before get in, getting into that case we need to know some terms and some concepts before going into that the first concept is that of not this it's that of electronegativity Now, this electronegativity, maybe you would have heard it as a common term, oxygen is electronegative, fluorine is electronegative, sodium is electropositive. What this actually means is that the force with which an atom pulls a bonded electron it's not actually the measure of the force it's a relative term it's more of the relative force like suppose you have a compound AB and this is the bond between A and B now this pair of electrons between A and B which are shared I'm not talking about ionic compounds I'm talking about this covalent compounds this shared pair of electrons they will not very quietly sit in the middle they will go to the more electron negative element i mean they will little bit they will be towards b if b is more electron negative that is so when they go towards this this b acquires some delta negative and a acquires some delta positive this delta is nothing but a small i mean small charge you can say 
it's not actually the charge it's a kind of pseudo charge because the electrons are pulled towards b and so the negative field around b is a bit more than around a and since the electrons are pulled away from a there will be a sort of a positive atmosphere around a so this delta negative and delta positive are not actually the charges on b and a but they are kind of pseudo charges I mean they are just an atmosphere of charge now what does this actually mean is that if you break the bond a and b it is more likely that b will come out with a negative charge and a will come out with a positive charge if b is electro negative more electro negative than a like actually uh, in methane this is the structure of methane if you break any carbon hydrogen bond you will see that it is easy i mean most more often this will come out with a positive sorry this will come out with a negative charge and h will come out with a positive charge because carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen so this electronegativity is nothing but the pull of the electrons the the ability to pull the electrons towards itself the bonded electrons towards itself and due to this electronegativity the breaking of the bond will tend to give a negative charge to the more electronegative element 